Well, after all the twists and turns of this unpredictable basketball season, this weekend did give us an absolute, and that's there's no debate. Purdue is the best team in the country. The latest AP poll proving that, so let's take a look here. The Boilermakers becoming the first unanimous number one team this season. Tennessee up to number two. Bama dropping two spots to number four. Baylor jumping six spots to number 11 after beating two tournament teams in Kansas and Arkansas. TCU down four spots after a loss to Mississippi State. Big jumps for Providence, St. Mary's, and Clemson. And Auburn tumbling 10 spots hanging on to number 25 after losses to Texas A&M and West Virginia. Let's bring in the expert now, Isaac Trotter, to break it all down. Isaac, the Big 12 SEC Challenge was a perfect opportunity to see the depth of the Big 12 and the lopsidedness in the SEC. But I don't think anyone saw this Alabama-Oklahoma final score coming. On paper, great matchup for the Sooners, but a 24-point win. How worried are you about the Tide? First of all, I think we got to give a lot of credit to Oklahoma coach Porter Moser. I thought he put on a clinic with his ability to keep Alabama from moving the basketball very well, and then he just attacked them in pick and rolls. But I, at the end of the day, I still think this Alabama team has a chance to make a Final Four. It wasn't that long ago, just last year, in fact, in the Big 12 SEC Challenge, where we saw Kentucky just absolutely steamroll Kansas, and then Kansas went on to win the national championship. So this, this game, like Nate Oates said after the game, like, he felt like Alabama hadn't been playing very good. I think this is going to be a wake-up call for Alabama. They're going to get back locked in offensively. They're at their best when the ball is hopping all over the floor. And it just wasn't the case against Oklahoma. And they let Oklahoma guard Grant Sherfield get way too comfortable. So I expect Alabama to get locked in defensively. And this team is so much more talented than some of the middle teams in the SEC. And especially the bottom of the SEC is pretty down. So I expect the next three games, Alabama can really get, get locked in again on the defensive end understand their principles offensively. This is still a young team. They're really talented, but they're still young. They'll learn. And I think this is a situation where we'll see the best version of Alabama because of this game. You're going to see a lot of learning lessons for this young team, and I think it'll pay off in March. Yeah, good to have those lessons learned sooner rather than later. Staying in the SEC, Tennessee has won four straight after that loss to Kentucky, and Rick Barnes gets the dub against his former program. How far do you think this Vols team can go? I love this Tennessee team. Love them. Like everything about them. Watching them play, like they just they just punch haymakers at opposing teams on both ends. Defensively, best defensive team in the country. But I think offensively, this team is a little bit slept on. They have a lot of depth. They have multiple guards who can go get theirs. Zakai Ziegler has been a revelation so far this year, just like we thought he might be. Olivia Kama was awesome against Texas with his ability, especially in those pin downs, those low post areas with him to able to finish around the rim with either hand. So I just really like the mac the makeup of this team, their mentality. And I think a lot of times with Rick Barnes, the main conversation around him is, can they win in March? And I just don't really want to worry about that right now. I want to enjoy this team. This team's really talented, they're really tough. They're together. I expect them to make a run in March. And you know what? At the end of the day, like we'll we'll make we'll see what that happens. We'll see if that happens for Tennessee. But they have all the pieces to do just that. And I'm just not going to worry about it. I'm just going to enjoy how good of a team this is right now, and how deep, how strong, how talented, how much they care about the defensive end. And let's let's worry about March a little bit later, when, or when that time comes. I love that. Live in the present moment. What a mindset. All right. Last week, UVA was your underrated team of the week. Underrated no more, as the Cavs win their sixth straight game. They're now a game and a half behind Clemson in the conference standing. So what's your case for UVA being the best team in the ACC? I think there's untapped potential with this Virginia team. We've talked about their defense. We've talked about how different styles that they can play. But they're starting to integrate a couple freshmen into this mix that can really change the ceiling of this team. Isaac McNeely is a, a shot maker as a freshman, a really good shooter. He looks like the next great Virginia guard eventually down the road. You're seeing Ryan Dunn come off the bench and play great defense, get out and transition. He's a big time athlete. He looks like a Virginia wing. And those two guys complement the rest of this roster so well. And Virginia can play so many different styles and they can beat you in ball screens. They can beat you with post ups. They can beat you on the defensive end. Reese Beekman's been one of the best underrated players in the country. I think he's in one of the in, in that top tier of elite guards. And so you look at this Virginia team who you know is going to defend, and then you add in all these other pieces and the freshmen that are coming together. Like this is sky high upside for this Virginia group. I, I still believe they can win the national title, and they're a game behind Clemson in the loss column in the ACC. I have a feeling that last day of February when they play Clemson. That could be the game that 
potentially swings the ACC race, and they have as good a chance as any to win the ACC crown. All right, looking forward to that. Indiana enters the poll at number 21 after a five-game win streak. The Hoosiers, one of the best shooting teams in the country, making more than 50% of their field goals. Not getting a lot of talk, though, so why are they your underrated team? This is an Indiana team that at the beginning of the year were like, can they shoot? And yeah, they can. And Trace Jackson Davis has put this team on his back. They've had injuries to Race Thompson, injuries to Xavier Johnson, and Trace Jackson Davis will not let this team bottom out. I haven't been a big Trace Jackson Davis fan until this year, but he's completely swayed me. He's been fantastic. His playmaking, like he doesn't need to shoot the three to be awesome. His playmaking has been fantastic. He's racking up career high assist rate so far this year. He's dominant inside. You play him one on one and it's over. He's a bucket. And Jalen Hood Shafino, the freshman, has been absolutely on fire from downtown. He had his Michael Jordan flu game going against Ohio State where he hit six threes in a game where he wasn't feeling that great entering it. And this is an Indiana team that's about to get Xavier Johnson back. And I think you'll see that most impactful is on the defensive end, like getting Johnson back, getting Thompson more healthy. Like this Indiana defense had some issues in the middle of the season without those two guys. Now they're getting their older guys back. Some of the younger guys don't have to play quite as big of a role. I think you're going to get to see this Indiana team get back to being elite. And when you have a national player of the year candidate like Trace Jackson Davis, you have a real chance. And Jackson Davis has just put this team on his back and it, I, I don't know, man, like he is as improved as any player in the country. And that's saying something because he was awesome last year. So it's just an unbelievable turnaround for this Indiana team that looked dead to rights just a couple weeks ago. Gonzaga moves up two spots in the poll and has only lost four games this season. But the Zags are overrated team this week. Why is that? I'm not buying their defense. This is one of the worst defensive teams Mark Few has had at Gonzaga. They give up way too many points. In transition, they give up way too many easy looks in the half court. Their defense at the rim has been frustrating. And this is a Gonzaga team that arguably on paper has as much talent as anybody in the country. Like Drew Timmy is an All-American type of candidate. Julian Strother, we've seen his ceiling. He just dropped 40 points the other night. They have talented young guards. But for some reason, the defensive end has been a huge problem for them. Like this is on pace to be the worst Gonzaga defense in 15 years. Efton Reed was a five-star recruit big time LSU transfer who's not really done much for them and he's a guy who could have added a lot of rim protection if he can find his way to get into this rotation so this Gonzaga offense can score like we've seen them play with Alabama and beat Alabama because they just go off offensively but defensively they have to get a whole lot better if they want anything to do with the final four or even winning the West Coast Conference who is getting a lot of better teams like there's some real teams out in the West Coast Conference that are about to give Gonzaga the real test and you know, we're talking about a situation where the Zags could not win the WCC, which is unheard of after their dominance out West. So, and if they don't clean it up defensively, that could be a real problem. All right. Thank you, Isaac. And for more college basketball analysis and news, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to the 24-7 Sports YouTube channel.